Alrighty, we are back. Third time is the charm here. I'm sure everything is going to work perfectly. We are in game three of Stony Brook versus Denver. This is a one-to-one -one series with Denver taking the first, Stony Brook taking the second, and it is anybody's game for the third. Uh, I am Zingle, and joining me once again is Hachiko. What's up? So they're going to just... I don't know. They, do the picks, they might the completely picks, do it over sure. again because having that Research first pick there time. does mess things up. Having that uh, first pick on Shadow Demon, it could have been they wanted that 1-2 combo of Shadow Demon plus 1. I don't know if they agreed to a full redraft or they committed to those first picks and bans. But we'll see. They're going to ban the same hero anyway. We're most likely going to see an Underlord ban anyway and an Earthshaker ban anyway. But they do change up the saw, bans We here. saw a Tinker last time, so... Yeah, we saw a Tinker ban instead of the Shadow Demon here. So they do change up the bans. University of Denver should have first pick here. So it's possible that they uh, don't want that 1-2 combo of a Shadow Demon plus 1, and that's why they let it through. They know if they don't get a two combo of Shadow Demon plus Luna on Stony Brook, they can afford to let one go through and then they can counter before the other one is picked. But bands being changed up just a little bit. But now, Tinker is available for Stony Brook. Uh, Stony Brook does know that Denver has it on a priority list to ban, so they might ban it second phase, making go Stony Brook forced to pick it first phase if they want it here. Uh, the dynamic of the draft having the remake does change a little bit, but still they are the same players with the same heroes and same preferences, so we'll see how they uh, adapt to this. Honestly, that's part of the fun, seeing how these players who don't play this game for a living are able to adapt and uh, change on the fly. So in terms of first pick here, they had... First pick the first game, right? Yeah, and they went with the Earthshaker. Yes. That's not an option for them this time. Uh, also something to note, Chaos Knight has won both of the games. So that could be just uh, artificially high on this priority list for both teams. Just because of small metas form in each match. <laughs> even though it might not be the top priority pick always. That since it has had so much success in both of these games, it could be up there. But Denver is going for a Lich. That kind of tells you that they wanted to uh, commit to a strong laning lineup, kind of like they did last game with their aggressive uh, tri-lane. And Lich does that very nicely, being able to take XP away from your other team and put it onto your lane, as well as having that ice armor and slow so you have strong laning spells. Uh, would not be surprised to see this go as a sort of 2-1-2 or maybe even aggressive lane with Lich there to put the balance back into their favor. Interesting first pick, but it seems like with these type of teams, they like to just get some heroes out there first and then decide on what the enemy is going to pick and try to counter that based on the draft last game. As we saw, the Crystal Maiden came out. They just want to find the read on each other's draft before committing to anything. Yeah, only hope playing the CM last game played it fairly well, and they're going to go for the Slardar. It's pretty similar to Sand King, so it might just be the 1-2 support combo again. We've seen Slardar as a support in two... Uh, I think it played a core last game, actually, so it only played support in one of the game the series, but it could very well come back as a support here. Um, Sand King not being banned out, it's most likely going to be picked up by one of the teams as it was prioritized in both of the other games, and it provides a very good stun. Interesting, though. Uh, Kunkka comes over here. He doesn't really have a good setup stun from Lich. Typically, you have Kunkka with a support that has a setup like Shadow Demon, but Shadow Demon is banned out, and Kunkka by himself... Still a strong uh, support, but a little bit harder to play without that... Uh, he's just uh, on and off support in general. If he hits all his spells uh, consistently, then he's just pretty amazing. But as soon as he just starts missing a torrent or a boat or not getting it on ideal targets, he starts to be somewhat of a bit of a non-factor in a lot of fights, especially if they don't you don't have a huge lead where you can just X mark torrent people and mm -hmm. just go for pickoffs left and right. But at the same time, he is pretty nice at uh, countering Crystal Maiden. You can Torrent to cancel the CM ultimate. You can use the X mark and instantly cast it, even if they haven't moved to cancel the channel. And you can use your boat to give everybody on your team that rum buff, which is very good. And it can also be used to cancel. So a good team fight, early initiation type of hero. 
And with Lich also favoring that kind of uh, tempo in the game, we could see this uh, as a very early uh, game of aggression out of Denver. And banning Our Tinker. CK is That's, banned out. Yeah, CK and Tinker, these are very uh, non-surprising to us. Even though in a typical meta you'd be kind of weird to see that, the CK has dominated the last two games, and Tinker on Stony Brook was definitely the MVP of last game. So, good bans, both teams afraid of what the other has got to offer. But Lich Ice Armor is pretty strong against Slaughter. Oh yeah. Uh, it provides it's... up to 9 armor at level 4. And not only the armor, it's the uh, movement speed slow as well. When you hit that ice armor, you can't really follow it up with more hits. So if you don't kill them and with one big chunk like a Chaos Knight would, the Lich armor will help escapes happen. And a PA coming out as a ban once again. They banned it last game, they banned it this game. Uh, could be just a respect ban against the carry from Denver, or it could just be a good pick against what they want to run. Uh, I don't know. The, these bans are not traditional, but they are definitely following a pattern here. So I have to believe that these players know what's going on, and they have researched very thoroughly what they could of the other team. Reserve time. Oh, Sven taken out. Dire team's turn to pick. Darkseer was focused before, but I guess they feel like if they just take the Sven out, they're not too afraid of that Darkseer slaughter Sven combination. Yep. Also, Sven provides an AoE Aura armor, so or not Aura, but an AoE casted armor that's almost full uptime. So having a Slardar give you an Amplify and then Sven's Warcry just giving you 20 armor completely cancels it out and helps the rest of your team. With that, in addition to Lich, that is going to be very tough to deal with through break clicks. However, wait a second. I completely switched that up. It is Denver that banned it against Stony Brooks picking it, so does not even work in the way that I was interacting. It works more in the way that you were saying with that combo of the Slardar stun with Vacuum Wall and all that. Because they did go for that game one and said they're going to get a Wraith King. Right. Pretty similar to the Sven. Early game, very strong. Most likely will go in Armlet, has high physical damage. Uh, this definitely tells you that they want that tempo, that early game push from Stony Brook as well to counter out Denver's uh, early game. So this last game, Tinker and Medusa, they both hunkering down for the late game, although it didn't get there. That was the idea. This game is uh, seems both teams are switching it up and going for that early game aggression, early game stomp. Uh, the way Stony Brook look like they've been playing is they like to play very team oriented, especially with Savior. It didn't really work out too well in their first game, but considering how far he was behind in the second game, they were able to bring it back. It, so it looks like most of their play is based around how well Dark Raider can do in the mid lane, because Dark Raider had a pretty rough game in the first game. And even though he was able to bring back some fights with the double or triple remnants, it wasn't enough. Yep. A juggernaut picked up here from Denver. That is uh, possibly a safe lane, possibly a mid, but regardless, it is a good pick against Wraith King because it is a Manta Defusal carry. Uh, something to note is that in this recent patch, uh, Manta Defusal is not actually the build most juggernauts go for. They go for the Manta uh, Mjolnir because the attack speed now benefits illusions, but we might see the, the throwback uh, Defusal pick up against the Wraith King because burning out the mana really hinders that hero. Axe, uh, pretty strong hero against Juggernaut. Mm -hmm. It makes me think that's an offlane Axe. They're predicting it's a safe lane Juggernaut, and that's going to be a support Slardar with a safe lane Wraith King. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising since they had support Slardar in the first game as well. Mm -hmm. and we're going to see a Timbersaw pickup from Denver. Very good pickup. Very up strong here. against Stony Brook's heroes. Yeah, they do have the magic damage and pure damage from Crystal Maiden and Axe, but without those two, Slardar and Wraith King will tickle at the Timbersaw, and especially if Timbersaw gets a good game with the help of Lich giving uh, Timbersaw that early armor, because Timbersaw isn't particularly good until you get those uh, reactive armor stacks up, so Lich can help kind of stop that spike from being so low. Reserve time. And uh, possibly a mid Timbersaw, but I would expect it to be off lane Timbersaw with a Lich and then safe lane Juggernaut with the Kunkka support using the X mark and Torrent to secure kills with the spin. 
Uh, and then Stony Brook's lane probably won't change up too much against that Timbersaw. If they have an aggro, or if they have the defensive tri lane of Wraith King Stardar and Crystal Maiden, a Timbersaw at early levels is not going to be enough to bully them out like they did in the last game. Queen of Pain. Do you think this might be a mid Conka? It could be. Um. Stony Brook clearly doesn't think so, because they ban out Queen of Pain, that's a mid-hero, but Kunkka is a hero that has filled either the mid-roll or the four-roll pretty uh, often, but more often than not, it is that four-roll. You know, maybe it's a mid, maybe they're, they're just giving us another throwback of the Manta Diffusal Juggernaut and a mid-core Kunkka. Kunkka does do fairly well against the Axe, because you don't actually have to hit the hero, you can just hit from afar and uh, burst through all that armor because the cleave mechanic. Because the only reason I say that is the supports that they've picked so far in the first game and the second game have been relatively static. Uh, surprising to see a Kunkka pick up from them as it doesn't look like that's how they really like to play. Both games, they really just sat in that lane and stayed there for a while, right? picking up that ogre. We will see very shortly, I hope. Uh, they go ahead and ban the Ember Spirit. That is another respect ban towards Dark Raider. Both Tinker and Ember Spirit banned up. And uh, it does mean that they expect a mid coming out of Stony Brook here, which is pretty fair to say. That will be a Centaur picked up, so it will be a most likely mid Timber Saw here with a safe lane Juggernaut and off lane Centaur. However, they could swap it up. They could do any sort of combo with those three heroes in those they three lanes. They could do an aggro tri-lane once again. Yep, they could do any sort of combo with those three cores in those uh, in the three lanes. So, very smart drafting coming out of Denver. Even after the draft is done, they're definitely uh, scratching their heads on Stony Brook, trying to guess the lanes. Reserve time. But, I think it's pretty clear that Stony Brook still needs a mid. None of theirs match up particularly well if it's a Timbersaw mid. So, they are going to be looking for a stronger laner here. Possibly OD once again. It is not banned out, and it does do pretty well against Timbersaw. And it will be a Shadow Fiend mid. Okay. Uh, it does okay against Timbersaw. Not particularly well until you get the levels in your raises, but also he doesn't get bullied particularly hard by Timber because you can just kind of back off, farm the waves really quick, and run away. So with this, with the picks done, uh, do you think there is a draft win here? Do you think one team has a clear advantage, or is it going to really come down to the play once again? It's really hard to say. The Wraith King is going to be pretty important in this draft. He needs to get some early items done, or otherwise he's just going to get bursted in these fights by the Timbersaw yep. very quickly. If this Wraith King falls behind like he did on the uh, Chaos Knight last game, I think hope is lost for Stony Brook because Shadow Fiend does not have that same 1v5 potential that uh, Tinker does. However, if this Wraith King does get a good start, does get that uh, early armlet, blink, whatever he decides to go for, he is definitely a strong hero. Uh, so, Mrs. St. Blue is going to be playing Timber. That was their safe lane in the two previous games. Mrs. St. Blue, yes. So, so it will be a mid jug, it looks like. It, safe lane Timber saw. It does look like it. Wow. And I was about to say, as long as Timber saw gets a good start, Denver definitely look like they have a pretty good chance of taking this game if they can just slow down the Wraith King a little bit as he matches fairly well against all their heroes. Yeah, come come mid and late game. Wraith King does do fairly well, but early on might struggle a little bit. I've seen the countless numbers of axes and slaughters just get immediately deleted by a timber saw. Yeah. However, T uh, axe versus timber saw lane it really depends on how the players control that lane uh, equilibrium all right and with the game starting i am going to switch over the uh overlay this time to the correct overlay so no flame here the game is pa unpaused and game is underway so the timber saw versus axe as i was saying it really depends on how they control the creep equilibrium in my opinion because if axe gets a very early lead manages to get down this wave and gets a good call on the timber saw timber saw does not stand a very uh good chance at surviving against all that pure damage but 
if Timbersaw does manage to hold off the lane, manages to get away from Axis Spins, he could end up just winning this lane with the Whirling Deaths staring away at uh, Axis Strength. Man, I need to get some water. Meanwhile, it looks top, like yeah. Denver once again is going to go for a uh, aggressive tri lane here. That level 1 torrent will be a swing and a miss onto Only Hope, so that will be the end of that aggression there. If that torrent landed, it could have been the beginning of a first blood for uh, Denver, but they're going to be content getting their own runes on both teams and just kind of playing this a little bit slow to begin. Uh, Lich doesn't want a level Frost Blast to set that up at level 1. I don't think that is ever the build, even if it gets you first blood. Yeah. It's uh, Having definitely the question. control over the lane equilibrium is so big. Yeah, Lich had walked mid to deny the creep there, but he changes his mind, goes towards top, and he's most likely going to eat that range creep once he gets in range, but he'll actually be blocked up, so the earlier the better. So it's off cooldown, and that it will be a lane advantage consistently the side of Denver as long as the Lich does not die. Meanwhile, only hope is going to start in the jungle. The best way to counteract that minus uh, XP in lane is just to get it elsewhere on the map from jungling Crystal Maiden. It will make their lane a little bit weaker here, but I think it will uh, it'll be okay at the end. I think going for the right play this time. Last game, he just tried to babysit, and this time he's going to realize that if he sits in lane and they're sharing experience with three heroes while losing their range creeps, that's just uh, not a good situation to be in. Yep. And let's go look at mid lane. This is a lane that is more in favor towards Shadowfiend than the Shadowfiend versus Timbersaw matchup would have been. So I am expecting uh, pretty good things out of the uh, mid from Stony Brook once again. He already has uh, four souls, so he is being out CS'd by Juggernaut, but that's to be expected at level 1 and level 2. But come a minute or two from now, he should be able to have an advantage. Meanwhile, so Timbersaw uh, losing to Axe a little bit right now, but he's going to be able to catch up, but oh, he's falling quite low, This is the call that I was calling about. First blood here. If Axe dove, he would have had a very high-risk, uh, high-reward play there. That's definitely something Eternal Envy Sama would do. Uh, I always give him praise where I can, but... I completely missed that. I did not expect to kill. T-Tours happen. They actually get a first blood onto this uh, Lich. This is how they win that lane, to be honest. Lich is not strong in the early game. And you you cut the bleeding and you cut it short right at the start by killing him. So, good play coming out of the Stony Brook squad. They almost get a kill bottom and they do get a kill top. So, the lane's looking a little bit more in favor this game than it was last game. And they're looking for another kill actually right onto the Lich. They do get a follow up stun. Torrent does kind of interrupt it and Centaur stun does also get two, but... This Lich is going to be chased down. A Wraith Fire Blast plus a, a Nova from, or Frostbite from CM will ensure that kill. Meanwhile, Axe bottom, gets Axe a gets a kill. kill. Yeah. Bloody fight top. They will end up getting a kill, a return kill here onto the Crystal Maiden. So a one for one top after already losing the Lich. So Lich has two deaths. And meanwhile, bottom, Axe getting a solo kill is a big deal. So he will hit level five before uh, Timbersaw does. And that extra pure damage on his spin will be even more in favor for his laning. And I like how he skipped boots. He doesn't really uh, prioritize this uh, early running around and he just goes for that regen so he doesn't lose this lane ever. Oh, but the supports from Denver are actually going for a gank now. Two yeah. men smoke up onto the mid. We were saying, That's though, they're Shadow not particularly is. strong. They do have uh, Shadowfiend as a target who isn't particularly escapable, and Shadowfiend is chasing onto the high ground, being baited by Juggernaut, so he's actually going to be in a very bad spot. With the Courier also walking in, they're going to change focus onto the Courier, no, but they will end up getting the kill onto Shadowfiend and letting the Courier get away. Good follow-up from the supports, and a good bait from the mid to pull Shadowfiend into the river. Dax uh, showing his dominance in the lane right now. Oh yeah. The CS at the very start was alright for Timbersaw, but uh, considering he has a death on him as well, Axe is definitely in the lead here. Top lane, there's going to be... Oh, mid lane, there's going to be a kill with the Slardar top, but also... 
with the Slardar going mid, but top there will be an attempted kill onto the Centaur War Runner with a Wraith King and Sizzle Maiden, but he will run away. There is action all across the map this game. I am completely uh, missing these because last game there was no kill for at least four minutes despite having an aggressive lane. So they're switching it up a little bit here. And Dark Raider having a haste here. He might try to bait Juggernaut into a little bit of an overcommitment. And one more right click here. He actually will get a kill. He's going to chase for it. It will not miss uphill and he will go for the third. And now he's going to chase down a Lich with a raise and a second raise. He will get a double kill mid, baiting the Juggernaut to go after him with that haste rune bottled up. Incredible play out of Dark Raider here. Turns around a kill onto him into a double kill the other way. But... As I say, that top lane, it is going to be a Torrent X combo onto the Crystal Maiden, followed by a Stomp, but CM has the raindrops to diminish some of that damage, and it will turn around right back into the favor of Stony Brook, killing onto the Centaur with a lucky crit from uh, Wraith King. Oof. This is hectic. Hectic stuff. But look how big of a lead Axe has now in the bot lane. Oh yeah, he's he's so far ahead, he's level 6, meanwhile uh, Timbersaw is still level 5. He actually, Timbersaw just gets level 6, but Axe has time to farm the jungle while cutting the creeps and killing out the creep lane, so his farm is definitely ahead. I'm going to switch over to Net Worth, even though it's a little bit early for that, and he is almost a thousand ahead of the Timbersaw in Net Worth. Uh, I'm not so sure what really directed Denver to switch up their strategy going for the aggressive tri lane, but it did work out okay for them the second game, but in terms of uh, winning, it is not working for them this game. Oh, definitely not. The top three net worths all going in favor of Stony Brook, and by a pretty wide margin. Uh, 1k ahead in net worth on the axe over the timber salt, 1k in net worth of the Shadow Fiend over the Juggernaut. It's, uh definitely how they want this game to be going this is their dream game coming back after the first game loss they're showing that they are not to be underestimated but X getting taken down potentially in the bot lane now he's gonna get the call there is no more mana here onto the timber saw. He will juke out the torrent combo, but there will be an X mark. X is now just turning back around with this tango and ring of health. He has 50, 17 health regen, so he is also not a very easy kill. And they most likely won't be able to kill timber saw, though, because the three points in reactive armor gives him 15 armor, 15 regen. He is not an easy uh, takedown. So a little bit of uh, aggression bottom, it'll just be end up poking back and forth and both heroes back to full health in no time. But 